All right. Hello and welcome to our uh, February 20th offline local collaboration working group meeting. Um, and Jim is going to give us a, a fun demo of something he's literally building at this moment, so may or may not work, um, on top of Peerbase. So um, I had a demo be um, that was working before, and uh, let me show the demo. Uh, let's see, close all these little things here. Too many demos. <laughs> Okay, um, so I have a demo at lights.jimpick.com and um, this was built as a, Molly, you should, you should open up lights.jimpick.com in your web browser. If it loads up, oh, I think it's going, it's a little slow. It, yeah, so, there, so you must have it, so, um, yeah, so yeah, I can just see entrance toggled on there. So um, this is a very, I was sort of building this as perhaps something that could be a demo uh, or an introductory programming um, exercise. So let's see, the, the actual source for this one's really short. So it looks, this is the whole, They've integrated the um, um, peer base, and then there's a little bit of React in there. And I was experimenting with the um, the new feature in React.js called Hooks, which makes it integrate something like this in there, really simple. And it's 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 built using the create React React app, um, it builds a skeleton app, and then you just modify it. And um, but one of the things the skeleton app does is it builds in a service worker and you have to opt into it. So, um, and in here, there's a little comment here. If you want your app to work offline and load faster, you can change unregister to register. Um, so that's actually what I'm gonna do. Except um, ignore what I just did because that's on a, <laughs> <laughs> the wrong computer. <laughs> I'm logged in remotely here. Okay. Uh, so okay. What so this is this is, uh, this is I deployed it for my machine at home, so I'm like logged in. So this is my machine at home. So there, that says register. And then what you do is you do npm run build. And then you wait. And it's going to make a, a like a bundle of JavaScript. So if I go, so this is this is just a static site with all my files. So I'll deploy that to IPFS. Okay, so that's built. So if I go to um, maybe, I wonder if it's a quick way to do this, if I can just, I haven't actually tried this on the public gateway. So if I just put the dash in, this will be sort of neat if that works. In the meantime, I can try to use IPNS to deploy it. So, yeah. uh, publish. Oh no, IPFS need publish. I haven't done this for now. So now we're publishing over IPNS? Um, yeah, so if I can just do. If I can remember if that's the key, uh, maybe it's lights.jimpick.com. I, I, this always takes a little bit. 
Hmm. Unless I published it from a different. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see, I could be on this one. Hmm. I have to investigate. Okay. See this one timed out. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Molly. How's it going? Doing well. We are doing a um, like deeper I'm dive on kind of pure pad, pure base in, in this one. Okay. I just mm. want to make sure this is the thing that should help. I hear a Stephen. Yes. But still, like, Hmm. I wasn't planning to do this live. Uh, I think the um, the thing that we were playing around with was Jeremy. Um, is this little app that Jim built? And I just pasted in the chat, um, which is kind of like home automation over peer base, effectively. Right. And this idea of, of being able to like make it work offline, effectively. But I think there's also like, I, I, Jim, my understanding of the way that you were thinking of making it work offline was through things like, um, through service workers that would do the caching effectively, mm -hmm. um, instead of more the like, kind of, you know, peer to peer, okay. I'm able to discover, discover people in my local network. That's funny, I never used IPNS when I published it the previous time. So yeah. that was why I couldn't find the key. There so you I use this service called uh, Zite now and it lets me modify my DNS really easily. So. Okay, so. Ah, uh, sad. Still in a room, so it'd be quieter. But curious, Jeremy, what, what in offline world has been tickling your fancy this past week, especially with some amount of uh, getting a little bit into locations with mediocre cell reception a little? Yeah, I think, I don't know, I think it'd be fun to play around with um, Bluetooth stuff more. Yes, there was actually um, a proposal to kind of write up Bluetooth, Bluetooth has kind of an RFP in the Lipi2P space and see whether um, either someone from the community or like more, you know, I don't know if it's actually doable by an intern or something like that, but mm -hmm. it would be really cool to, um, I get the impression that the Lipi2P team is, is super busy right now and the more that we could um, yeah. empower that to get done without using their, their time, the better. Yeah, agreed, it'd be really nice. And it seems like something that could be done hackily pretty easily. Yeah. Um, that could be interesting. I think the, the thing that um, the, the IPFS team, the people who are looking into it, sorry, on the P2P side were, were like really excited for it to work with um, JS IPFS and um, like work within web browsers and stuff like that, which yeah. the, the web Bluetooth spec is still not phenomenal. I think we should just get something that works and worry about JavaScript later. Yeah, and something that hopefully works from a, uh, um, you know, it's, it's not painful for me to connect with Bluetooth peers around me. I don't have to do a lot of like one-off 
um, handshaking with everyone that I want to pull things to and from. Yeah. Ideally. But I bet there's still value in setting up Bluetooth just between like your own set of devices. So like computer to phone or something like that. Yeah, that would be like computer to phone would be really nice. That's kind of what I want. Yeah, I agree with you on that. If, if you are interested in, you know, helping spit out a, a high level RFP of, of what we would want, that level of like defining the, the requirements, I would happily sit down and help pound that out. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe. We'll see if that, that time materializes somewhere. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. How you doing, Jim? Shall we? Um, it's, it's using the service worker. Um, I just realized that they have the offline toggle, toggle in Google Chrome, but you can't, it doesn't actually toggle off WebSockets. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's not a good test. But I'm going to try it on my phone and see if it, if it, uh, if it actually installed the service worker on my phone. So. I mean, I guess I could turn off my internet right now, but that would be a problem <laughs> for us continuing okay, uh, to have this call. Okay, I'm gonna put my phone offline and then try toggling something and then put it back online and see what happens. So, we got airplane, airplane mode. And then I'm gonna turn, uh, say I'll turn den on. Okay. Yeah, so my phone, you can't see it, but it's like, <laughs> the den is on, on my phone. But of course, nobody sees it because mm -hmm. offline, they go online. It might not sync automatically. I don't know if the logic's there. I think the even cooler case is if somehow. Hey, it worked. Yay. So there, offline works. <laughs> offline caching. Yeah, is well, so. Um, yeah, our CRDTs work really well with offline things. So, yeah. I mean, the next yeah. challenge is your phone. Your phone and your computer are offline, but um, but they are connected to each other. Yeah. So, so um, that confirmed to me that I don't actually have to do any work to make offline work with pure, pure base. So, awesome. Very cool. So, would would that case work where both your phone and computer are offline, but they're able to see each other's state, or is it needing to do any sort of central handshaking here? When they come back online, they would sync up. So, in terms of making them, yeah, meet up with each other, you can't really do that from a web browser because web browsers don't have access to the network directly. If you use the um, uh, like the lib D web. Uh, Firefox extension that gives the ability to use an experimental and multicast DNS. Um, but you, you have to write an extension that would support that. And I believe that the IPFS companion actually demoed that working. So that would be sort of interesting to see if that could work. So um, I'm not sure if that would work directly with PurePad peer base right now but that'd be sort of fun so if you have multiple people at a location and they all want to they're all on the same wi-fi but the wi-fi is cut off from the internet um that'd be sort of interesting so. exactly i mean i think that's the the offline collaboration use case that is actually super um super common you know just like we we want to all be in sync here even though um mm -hmm. There may be central things out there, but we just want to have things work in our little sub network. Yeah, and um, I'm in Portland this weekend. I'm um, went met for coffee with uh, Gozala, or mm -hmm. also Irak Irak is his first name. Yep. And um, he's building. He's experimenting with how to to um, build uh, websites that um, are able to talk to IPFS, but you don't have to install um the extension or anything so he's calling it uh peer-to-peer -peer progressive web apps and he has a project called ludet so that would be very interesting because you could um have the ipfs extension or uh, uh ipfs node locally that could say maybe talk bluetooth even and uh, they could find each other that way yeah i mean if we if we get a uh, bluetooth transport for low p2p sounds like that would still be a uh, kind of blocker mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. And I've even seen interesting pr projects where you can do 
like WebRTC peer to peer with in a completely disconnected environment, which is not something you can normally do with WebRTC, but they use audio signals for to make the connection for the signaling. So you'd, it would emit some like modem, like old school modem style sounds, and they somebody you'd have to turn on the microphone on the other device and it would hear the sounds. Um, I've also seen like you know like like QR codes that like flash, so you could like have a, like a bi-directional channel, so you could like point the camera at two devices and do a link, do a like a, a signaling channel that way, and then use WebRTC. So that could actually work offline to pass data between two phones, yeah. using like yes. continual, like many, many, many uh, QR codes all at once. Yeah. That's, that's so something like that could potentially work inside of uh, an uh, unmodified browser because most browsers mm -hmm. now have WebRTC support. Yeah. But the problem is they can't like make that initial handshake connection um, usually without a connection to the internet. So there's these sort of weird hacky ways to do it. So. Yeah, I mean, it, I feel like for a phone, scanning a QR code um, in some sense is, is like less hard. Like the phone can scan the QR code. The question is like, how do you then continue kind of pulling things from, yeah. from IPFS? Like one, yeah, like once they can um, establish that WebRTC link, mm -hmm. then they're connected. So that, that, would, that, that might actually work. So. I'll stop the share. Uh, I'll see if I can find the the that one bookmark for that one project. That was super. That'd be cool. Yeah, and I think also, um, you know, chatting more with Gozala about P two P progressive web apps. That sounds very much up our alley. Um, we should, you know, learn more about that. If if there's a link to that, that'd be really cool to add to the notes. Okay. Yeah. I guess like since, since we have you, you two on this call, um, so we have people who have thought a lot about peer base and like the library with which we make it easy to kind of do the underlying fundamentals of building up a distributed app that's kind of, you know, central, it's fully peer to peer, like there isn't a central node that's doing this and you can collaborate on it offline. And then you have Jeremy who's like thought about a lot of the stuff in this space also kind of from like the libp 2 p perspective, the, IPFS perspective of like, what are the fundamentals that we need? Like, um, what are what are your guys' thoughts on like the the biggest pain points right now for IPFS in the like offline space? Like, it is the biggest pain point that like we're missing this transport in libp2p, or are there some other even bigger ones that we should be focusing on? I think one thing is making. Um, making an IPNS that works and is resolvable with just over like LAN. So like I should be able to pull IPNS records from people around me and be able to see that. I think that would be a really useful, like really, really useful thing there. And I think the, um, like the pub sub, IPNS pub sub might help here, but it's unclear. Like, yeah, so the, being able to advertise some data that about myself to people around me would be really useful. Gotcha. And so that's like, um, effectively, I'm advertising my personal website to the people around me and effectively publishing to anyone who's, who's listening um, mm -hmm. for IPNS links, like what, what that is, or um, yeah, it would just to be like, use case. Like the, the idea is like I have some, some data that I want to associate with myself. Maybe it's like my website or some like, you know, list of interesting things or something like that. And if I'm around people, I think they should be able to discover that if it's like my public web page. <clears throat> so like, you know, some one one vision of an ideal world is like everybody has their own, you know, web page where they have information about themselves and whatever, anything they want to share. And if I'm around that person, it should be really easy to see see that and pull that. And so that's kind of one use case that pretty, I think would be pretty cool. That's kind of hard right now. And so that's kind of, let's imagine the case. It sounds like probably if it's, if it's going to be like local and um, 
local publishing around me all the time. It's probably a phone, right? Because our computers are not necessarily open around us all the time. This is, I have some, some content cached offline on my phone that I'm constantly advertising to anyone around me who's constantly listening. And then I have some way of viewing that advertised content. Um, yeah, it could be that. Uh, I mean, computers also could work. Like I lots of been in situations where I have my computer and just kind of hanging out. And I, I would use my computer more if there was something to do with it offline, you know? That's fair. Like chat. If there was a nice, easy offline chat. Yeah. The chat with the people around me. So effectively like orbit. Um, yeah. Coupled with offline. like the initial handshake to connect you to peers. Um, right. If I remember correctly, that was kind of the, you had to like be pre-connected and then going offline and coming back online, like that would work really well. But like the initial connection seems to be like the painful part here for everything. It's like, how do yeah. I get that initial handshake? How do we initially get connected? Because right now, um, kind of the centralized method of finding peers is um, just a lot faster. What about you, Jim? From your perspective, what's the, the thing that we should be focusing on most in this um, space? Yeah, I think that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, Arakli, he's actually, this is part of his vision for the, the Lunet project that he's working on, too, is he was talking about like being able just to have like the social network sort of appear when you're in the coffee shop and be able to sort of like ear, eardrop on steroids. So, and have it not just work on uh, Apple devices, but, you know. Yeah. So, I don't know if he's thinking completely of the, like the offline, I think, I think he is thinking of offline, but like just basically be able to quickly share in the coffee shop. So. Yeah. I think local first is like, it's a layer on offline where like offline is the extreme case, which is super common for many, many, many groups. Um, but even more common is like, yes, there is internet, but the internet's bad. <clears throat> I don't want to be sending like all of these videos that I took last week over my terrible, terrible coffee shop internet. Like, I just want them to go to you. Um, let's do this local first, even if there is uh, like some bandwidth somewhere. The, and, and at the coffee shop yesterday, uh, I was basically offline for a good 15 minutes because <laughs> the internet wasn't working for me. So I was going to show my go. demo. <laughs> yeah, super, super common. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I do get the impression that once we have peer discovery, really, you know, peer co connection, like it seems like the basics of IPFS work really well in that case. Like once I'm already connected to a peer, um, like everything works really effectively. Um, it's the, the finding the peer, making the connection, figuring out the transport layer, and then, um, then building the app on top is, is kind of our bread and butter. Yeah, and uh, I, th I think we're, we're making it because we have um, you know, the IPFS and web browsers group, and they already are working on things like IPFS desktop and that. So even if the browser doesn't support it, it'd be like, hey, you can run some native uh, application on your web, on your operating system, which can go talk to the thing, talk to the network. Um, on mobile phones, you're probably looking into mobile apps. Mm -hmm. So that might be something that might be difficult to do, like, like talk to the Bluetooth stack and things right from your web browser. Um, but then, you know, IPFS should work inside apps as well. So like the sort of the work Textile is doing. Um, so yeah. th those sort of applications would have no limitations on in terms of talk using the, the communication hardware on the phone. So. Yeah, I have seen a couple of apps that are like effectively running IPFS nodes inside, like um, Sweet IPFS. I don't know if any of you guys have played around with that, but it's just, yeah, it's an app on Android that is a, um, it's like an IPFS node inside of an app and you can just run, it's like a CLI. You can run basic IPFS commands within, within the app. Um, and they're kind of like adding more commands over time. I think right now they have like add and pin maybe and, and like that's about it. Uh, but they're, I think they're adding more. 
So that's kind of fun. I don't know if Textile actually runs IPFS nodes within the Textile mobile app. Do you guys know? They do. Yeah, they, they do. do. Awesome. That's so cool. That's good life. Yeah. Let's see. There was a thing I wrote a little while ago. Um, here it is. So this is a project I worked on in some free time that, that I found that is, um, it, it builds a native iOS transport and then plugs it into a cross compiled go the P2P that runs on an iPhone. What? And so this, yeah. That's really cool. And so the, the idea is this, the same library also does Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to move towards um, being able to use this method to plug in a Bluetooth transport into Golib P2P on iOS, um, which means we don't have to rewrite all the rest of libp2p for iOS. It's just like mm -hmm. that piece. Um, it's a little tricky, but mostly works. So cross compiling, what is this Golib P2P to like um, Swift or something? It actually compiles it to native, to like a native thing oh, and so then has bindings to code. it. Yeah. Exciting. Did it, did it ever work or was it impossible yeah, it was, to expect? It, no, it worked. I was able to like ping, um, like ping bootstrap nodes and stuff. Nice. Um, so yeah, it does the thing. It does the thing. But yeah, it needs, needs more work. And then I also need to figure out, um, yeah, I need to figure out how it all works. How okay. the Bluetooth works. Yeah, I mean, probably here you you still have to make like Bluetooth handshake things. Whereas, like the nice thing about BLE is um, kind of pass that data because it's smaller um, without having to do more Bluetooth handshakey stuff. Yeah, I don't know exactly how it would work. I think like any everything that supports Bluetooth is going to support BLE. Everything that supports Bluetooth supports BLE. I mean, it's like it's the same library under the hood. Yeah. You're making calls to the same system. Just with, OK, just effectively um, sending the initial packet of data along with, with yeah. Bluetooth itself. You would just, you just have to write the code differently to work that way. Yeah. Well, this is cool. I, I like this idea. And I think something probably that maybe the libp team hasn't seen. So it could be interesting for them to be aware of its existence. I shared it with Mike before. OK. So I know that um, I think Vasco on the libp2p team was looking into um, Bluetooth and was, was interested about mobile, but also was like, I don't know how doable this is, but more and more people are running yeah. uh, IPFS nodes inside mobile apps. So my impression is that's um, getting quickly into the realm of the, not just possible, but like actively used by many, many groups. Yeah. yeah. And so most people are just compiling um, Golib P2P to iOS directly and then using the uh, Go's TCP uh, libraries that are then being cross compiled to iOS. Um, but this thing I'm working on uses an iOS native TCP stack, which means that it's, um, it, it better respects the operating system. So it has like, um, iOS uses this grand central dispatch thing where everything works through this big main queue and the, it allows the phone to be like battery saving and smart about stuff and anything that doesn't respect that iOS has a tendency to just kill when it's misbehaving. Yeah. And so this actually respects that and has less chance of being killed. That's useful. Yeah. But there may be something they could hook in, like I, because the demo I just showed was a, a really trivial React program. The, mm -hmm. It was pretty good support for uh, React Native. So I could, but then it'd be figuring out how to yeah, the the lib p to p running in the JavaScript virtual machine. Yeah, it you to wouldn't run it in the, the talk to the iOS. So you'd have to be some like native bridging involved. Yeah, so, uh, it'd be interesting. Out that little 
it's probably just a little shim of code that has to get in the yeah. place and then uh, do you know how the react native talks to native react native talks to like the actual native code are there like uh, syscall type things you can make i haven't really got into that um they, they, they i know they run yeah they run a, a, a javascript virtual machine and then uh, mm. And the JavaScript will have uh, the interface to the to the C, you know, C native, the operating mm -hmm. system level, and uh, so I, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that's pretty well figured or documented in the React native community. Got so, it. so that that's one option. There's people do phone gap is another way where you can run like a web page in a yeah. web view, and then uh, yeah, a friend of mine works for Expo. And they like develop React Native stuff. I think yeah. he would probably know this a little better more than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like the web view model is really common as well, which is like I'm really I'm really just running a web view under the hood, but um, mm. but it looks super native-y because it's been you know mobile optimized from a design perspective. Yeah. Yeah, I spent several years building these sort of apps for clients. So. I'm sort of <laughs> it, I, it, it's really nice to have like a like native level um, like build everything completely native um, but you know people have to target iOS and Android and there's a lot of cross-platform frameworks available um, it, for, for my demo because it uses a peer pad and or peer base and peer bases written in JavaScript you're obviously limited to somewhere that can run JavaScript so fair enough yep Although it would be possible to uh, port the, the CRDTs and things that are, I, I think that'd be really neat to like port the CRDTs that are in uh, PeerBase uh, and uh, make like say like a native Swift version and like a native uh, Java or Kotlin version um, to, to target those communities. I think that would, if that paired with some really nice um, like full on native support. Uh, I mean, you could even go as far as to write, rewrite libp2p in Swift or something. Uh, that might be a bit crazy. Uh, but you could sort of do it bit by, you could do it bit by bit because. Yeah, I don't you think you need to rewrite. Own. Yeah, you don't need to re do a rewrite. I think it's actually unnecessary. Um, just being able to write the transports natively as, should be really good. Mm -hmm. Native transports. We've gotten back to like local peer discovery and uh, transports that better support, you know, like more local forms of communication, like um, what was it, uh, multicast and um, Bluetooth and such. Yeah. It's always useful. It yeah, an interesting thing with uh, phones is uh, they have two radios, right? You have the Wi-Fi radio, and then the so um, when you're building the discovery mechanism, you know you have more than more than one option there, and you might do the discovery with one radio and then do your communication with the other radio. Yeah. You know, like if, if there's a Wi-Fi access point in the coffee shop, and you can still talk to each other, but just can't get out to the internet because the the DSL line is down or something. Yeah, so. I mean, it's also I've definitely seen apps that um, do initial kind of discovery over Bluetooth and then construct like an ad hoc Wi-Fi um, like hotspot um, to to communicate over. Like that's also super common. Um, I bet, yeah, I bet computers are also decently good at doing that. If you have your your Wi-Fi turned on, you could. Uh, do Bluetooth discovery and then actually send stuff over like kind of local Wi-Fi hotspot. Yeah, like the the scenario is like if a bunch of people traveling on a plane together and they just want to swap files. Yeah, like they, they could. We literally uh, did that. <laughs> <laughs> literally wanted to do that. Juan and I did that. We used Orbit to chat on a plane. <laughs> nice. Um, was that using like? local Wi-Fi that you'd pre-configured or what? No, we just set up a like a local hotspot gotcha. and then connect and yeah. Works that well. Yeah, it works pretty well. Was that, pretty. they use JS libp2p to orbit does or did they use Go? 
No, it was Go. Gotcha. Yeah. Did you have to do the IPFS swarm add? Or? No, it auto figured it. It auto found okay. each other. Okay. Yep. Nice. Yeah, you just run them and the, the MDNS stuff. Oh, yeah. sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Not bad. Not yeah. bad. I think normally we would end end our meeting with any cool things you've seen from around the, the ecosystem of, you know, people who are, are doing cool stuff in this space or um, who we should go talk to next. So any of you guys have, have thoughts? Um, I think, huh? no, I don't really, I think finding somebody who's good at like Bluetooth programming would be a fun, I don't even know where to go about looking for those people. Uh, that's a good question. I, I know a bunch of them in Vancouver, so oh, um, nice. I, 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 I sort of came from that sort of app development area. So, um, nice. Um, yeah, I think uh, I want to talk more with Textile and see what they're doing. And uh, um, Carson, who works there, he's he's actually based close to me in Victoria, so I have to take a ferry, but it's not too far. Victoria is beautiful. Worth a visit anyway. I think the that's pretty cool. So I definitely I know there's some work that um, Carissa from um, Digital Democracy um, was was on the call last month um, and was showing some of the work that they've been doing around um, kind of offline collaborative mapping um, for these communities that spend a lot of time offline. And that's another um, kind of cool case of. I think they're mostly using DAT, though they've expressed some more interest in IPFS recently to like do that kind of progressive syncing as you have kind of more and more stuff mapped offline and then you kind of connect and you sync back to the rest of the network. But most of the time you're just collaborating with the people around you to do that mapping um, fully locally. Um, so that's another cool one. Cool. Well, cool. if there's any other cool things in the ecosystem that pop up, shout. Um, and I think in the meantime, we'll, we'll kind of push a little bit and see if we, Jim, do, um, if there's anyone who comes to mind in kind of Bluetooth expertise crossed with um, kind of more the peer-to-peer the -peer space, would, would love to talk to more people about getting that sort of expertise into our community. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I, I want to try and if, at some point, maybe not even by the next time we talk, look more into Bluetooth stuff myself. Please do. Yeah, um, I know that there is a an issue, which I'll, I'll plus in here from like lib P2P team where they were doing some kind of like research and experiments, but I think it was much more around like web Bluetooth instead of the like very baseline um, what would be like MVP prototype level Bluetooth support for, for lib P2P? Hmm. So, well, let's, let's take the, you know, remaining whatever, 12 minutes of our, of our day back and go <laughs> off and do the cool stuff. And I'll see you guys next month at the next local offline collab meeting. Cool.